Hey folks, uh, I'm MTN. No, it's done. Okay, I need to do another blog, and it's something that I kind of avoided doing, but um, I'm, uh, I'm I'm gonna do it uh, now because it's on my heart, and I, I've been thinking about it, and so I need to to get it, you know, to release it, you know, so I need to get it out, and so. I want to do something. Does anybody remember when they were trying to, when we first voted down the vote uh, in the Senate on uh, the House, this bill on uh, homosexuality? And um, one of the speakers said that the good thing about the um, gay people that are homosexuals uh, that have been uh, together, okay, is that they've been together for this long time. And uh, and so they take this one couple and say that they've been <laughs> together for a long time. Okay, now <laughs> I just saw an ad for uh, something where this one couple, uh, I think they were black too, uh, that they were together for 85 years married. Uh, this is not really relative to what I was saying, but what I, the what I'm. What I, I was getting to about is about the speaker. And this one particular speaker was saying that this couple have been, uh, these homosexuals have been together for such a long time and that they, uh, they love each other. Uh, and as I always say, you know, divine, you know, uh, God is love, define love and you define God, you know, uh, you know, you know, there's a lot of people <laughs> that love each other that are married to someone else, okay? Uh, but um, the thing about this one thing is that there's this mind job that p people do on, on, on heterosexuals. They talk about heterosexuals as being as unfit for marriage, is that they've done so poorly with marriage They've had divorce rate. The divorce rate is 50-50 or whatever it is. I don't know what it is. There, there's such terrible jobs of marriage that homosexuals, she literally said that we need to give them marriage so they can show us how to do it. Okay. So they downplayed marriage. And one of the big arguments with homosexuals is that they're such better uh, they're so much better at marriage or maybe moral or uh, or more f uh, fidel uh, have more fidelity uh, which um, I highly doubt is the case because if you ever come around two homosexuals I don't know how they have their arrangement but they could be all in love and then so another homosexual or a straight person might come around that they might be I don't know uh, interested in uh, and for some reason both of them seem to find that it's okay for one of them to get involved that's neither here nor there uh, but it's just like as long as they're breaking somebody in it's okay <laughs> anyway that's not my point my point was is that the speaker on this um, the speaker uh, I'm just speaking it let me say this I don't I'm speaking from what I know, okay? I'm speaking just common knowledge, experience, okay? And from what I saw. So when I talk about something, I talk about things that really happen, okay? So one thing that really happened is this woman on, on, on the house, a, a lawmaker, uh, had, uh, who, and it seems to me that women are very... Uh, very sympathetic uh, to emasculated men or these, you know, I turned on the television today and um, I saw this new show with these two guys and they're sitting bunched up on one side of the table and they have one woman on the other side. And it was very obvious to me that this woman was very much in control, that these two guys who had the show they might have had the show and they, you know, hand, tit tat and, and tell jokes and stuff like that in order for you to like them or, you know, you know, 
make funnies and stuff like that. And, and you become more like Ellen DeGeneres or whatever. Uh, so, you know, they become very uh, acceptable and, and um, very, it's, uh, very acclimated. So you become, oh, they make funny jokes, they find a comedian, and this is the exemplary homosexual. And so, you know, so it's okay for them to get married because they make us laugh and, uh, and they're cute. And stuff like that. Matter of fact, I saw this other show. Ellen DeGeneres, she is funny and she is cute, and uh, and, and 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 so like you know she you know she looks like you know she's just a, a, a sexy looking woman. But there's this other show. This is Doctor Show, right? <laughs> and this woman is like looks just like Ellen DeGeneres or whatever her name is. The last name is. Excuse me. Forgive me for mispronouncing it wrong. A degenerous, I think it is. Um, looks just like Ellen, okay, <laughs> and uh, and but she's not, you know. So it's like I saw her. She plays a doctor or something. So she's like the anti Ellen. <laughs> she's like the same sexy kind of woman, but heterosexual, you know. And she kisses doctors, but she looks, you know, really butch with the short hair and stuff, you know. So, <laughs> so it kind of throws you a little bit. <laughs> like a reverse polarity if they were ever two in the same room they would just cancel each other out you know <laughs> they would explode so I, I don't know maybe a, maybe they could actually procreate <laughs> that's a funny joke <laughs> anyway anyway uh, forgive the chit chat side chat demeanor but my point was is that this stuff happens and so this woman literally said, oh, homosexuals, we should give marriage, the holy institution of marriage, the last sacrament of man, marriage. We should give them to uh, male and female. We should give them to uh, homosexuals because they're going to show us how to do right because they know how to do better. If, if they're if somehow morally better, okay, or, or more for the, and we know that that's not true, that they're actually more promiscuous because that lifestyle. And so, so then the, the feedback is, is that, oh, well, if they had marriage, they'll be more so. Um, lots of things that keep heterosexuals together is, is marriage, kids, and stuff like that. So then we have to supplement that too to help them stay together or be more, less promiscuous. Anyway, I am so far off track. What well, my point is, is is that this devaluing of the heterosexual, devaluing of the family, devaluing like oh they'll do it better. This is, goes on constantly. Uh, you know oh they'll do better. You know when I I'm like you know you can't you you don't even procreate. You know, you how are you going to do better? You can't even understand. You know, I mean, we all love children. We know what it's like to raise children. I've raised several children that weren't mine. Love them to death. I even got children that are in my name that uh, aren't biologically mine. So, I, you know, I, I understand. But it's a little different still. It has to be a little different when you look and you see that person's face and it's yours. You know? That's a birthright, okay? I'm not down in anybody else, but that's a birthright. And so this, and so this, this the devaluing of the birthright. So heterosexuals have been duped into thinking, well, they're no good at marriage. They, they, they're doing a rotten job at marriage. They got a divorce. That's one of the hardest things to deal with. It's hard. It's so hard that. It's so hard to have marriage and to be get, be together and make that thing work right anyhow. You know, if we had a perfect marriage, we would have a perfect world. But let me tell you, even in the Bible, they basically gave up. They basically said, you know, Moses, the, the, the reason why divorce even came into play in the first place is because people were running off and leaving their wives anyway. And so divorce was really a certificate for you to protect the woman. Because if you see her around town with other men, she could get stoned as an adulteress. So even though her man took off and left her with the kids, 
and so she might need help or something like that, which a lot of homosexual women do. You know, they they uh, are you know they get they have they're married, they get divorced, they have a kid, they can't take care of it, and then here's a woman that's, that befriends her and helps her out, tries to help her, and play takes the role of that man. You know, so then other homosexuals that don't have kids uh, gets jealous or envious or whatever, and they want the same thing, you know. So, uh, you know, that, that competitiveness, the competitiveness. I mean, if you really was just happy with uh, marriage, you know, with being homosexual and being with a partner, nobody is stopping you from being with who you want to be with. So it's not that. It's one this entitlement. And with that entitlement is this honor that comes that covers the shame of sex and nakedness and, and being shacking up and stuff like that. That's what marriage always was. So this so what I wanted to do is um preach more on on, on just, you know, not having understanding on heterosexuals. This is not home about homosexuals. It is about heterosexual marriage and how people just don't value their birthright and that this divorce thing again how that happened and so this was another notch now i'm not saying people shouldn't get divorced but if you look you know uh jesus said because of your unforgivingness it's because your unwillingness because you the way you harden your heart that's why we, Moses made the law because you harden your heart. So divorce was never supposed to be. And the reason why Moses did it was to solve a problem of, you know, women getting attacked. And so he was a protected woman. And, and basically divorce is there because of your hardened heart. And also, uh, I wanted to go on to uh, not understanding your birthright. And so, um, so uh, maybe this will help me lead into it because I wanted to talk about this several times and I haven't got to it. That's what happened with Esau and Jacob. You know, they called es Jacob a trickster and that he took the birthright of his older brother. So he tricked him out of it for a cup of soup. His brother was working in the field. He was a field person came in he was so hungry and he said please just give me a cup of soup just give me some of that soup you making and he saw said uh jacob said well what do i get you know give me your birthright and so he had so little value his stomach you know was uh, took precedence over his birthright his his god-given blessing and the blessings that he was supposed to receive you know, he just tossed them to the side for a cup of soup. And so when people denigrate you and they try to, they try to um, knock your confidence down and they try to denigrate you and, and to, and that's what we've done with marriage and stuff like that. You know, like Al Bundy, Homer Simpson, you know, you're not leaders of the family. You know, to the value and the independence of men, like the independent woman, it's like to uh, the feminist movement is like that woman on the talk show is to devalue the man to where he doesn't know his own birthright, his leadership ability, his his position in the family as head of the household, his authority, authoritative figure, you know, a house divided can't stand, you're not equal, you know, you know, one's got to lead. You know, two, you know, you can't have just an evenly split house. It won't stand. It'll be tearing it apart. So, um, so that's why I, you know, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, I wouldn't consider being with a woman that doesn't understand that. I wouldn't consider it. If I'm a multimillionaire, you know, whatever, I'll pay you whatever, you know, to leave me alone, <laughs> but you're not going to tear up my house, you know, uh, and to, you know, you know, you know, I'm going to be the leader, you know, I am the leader, I am the authority, so uh, I stand in my own authority, you know, and a woman that can't deal with that don't need to be with me, you know, she can be independent of me, you know, you know she can get her own, you know, whatever. It's not about money, I'm saying. I'm just saying, you know, you know, we submit. I, if I can submit to God, then you can submit to me. You know, 
Anyway, um, one minute. So again, you know, not understanding your birthright, then you can get duped out of your birthright. And you've gotten duped out of marriage for a cup of soup. Praise God.